Welcome to tonight's City Council meeting of Wednesday, December 19th, 2012. Can I have the roll call, please? Donald Sykowski. Present. Salem Derby. Present. Dan Hagen. Present. Joseph McCoy. Here. Jester Ogilevitz. Present. Dan Riss. Here. Joy Winnie. Here. Nathan Ziegler. Okay, before we start tonight's meeting, I just would like to ask for a moment of silence and remembrance and support of the victims and families of the tragedy in Newton, Connecticut. Thank you very much. Um, Don't forget. Put it on. Could I please have a motion to approve the minutes of December 5th, 2012? So second. <coughs> motion a second to approve the minutes of December 5th, 2012. Any additional comments, discussion, abstentions? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. One abstention. Motion passes. Public speak time. Is there anyone here from the public who would like to address the council? Uh, please address, come to the podium and state your name and address, please. Good evening, David Motter, Fire Chief. Uh, as you may recall, a couple weeks ago I sent an email out to some of you and I placed flyers in your boxes regarding uh, training the Mass Fire Academy is offering to city officials on ethanol gasoline. Um, fortunately, that with this invention or insertion of this product into our lives to help our environment, it's created a public safety nightmare. Um, without getting into chemistry lessons, alcohol being a polar solvent fuel we can't just use the regular foam and water that we normally would use we had to go out and buy some special foam the main concern is the way it's transported over rail through unit trains which consist of 100 cars at a time and they do come through Hampshire County and is a plan to bring them through the spur along the Connecticut River as well as to, uh, over the road tank trucks and the racing mart in Northampton on East Hampton Road is one of the few in Western Mass that sells E85. So the State Fire Marshal's Office rolled out training uh, early last year for the fire departments, and they want to bring it to the attention of elected officials and city officials to see what we're facing and, and what the dangers are. The biggest part of that is on a public relations nightmare, large fires involving tank cars or rail cars, uh, DEP and the federal government, they put out a white paper, they recommend we let it burn. So you can imagine my phone, the mayor's phone, and probably your phone, if it were to happen in this city, is going to light up because the people just want to know why we're letting this burn. To let to put it out and let it get into the ground would cause an environmental nightmare. So the invitation is there. If there's anybody that wants to go, let me know. I will notify the fire academy. Unfortunately, they use their standard announcement that asks you to go to their website and register, which requires a student ID number. So if, you want, if you're interested, I know it's there a weekday during the day, but uh, the one for our area is at Williston in the theater. So if you have an interest, shoot me an email or give me a call and we'll get you on the list. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Chief. Hello, I'm Patrick Bruff representing the Greater East Hampton Chamber of Commerce. I just wanted to take a second today to talk to you about the Manhattan bridge uh, construction updates that have been going on through the Chamber of Commerce. We sent out our first email newsletter uh, regarding the, the Manhattan Bridge construction and I'm hoping that everybody had a chance to see it. We have uh, quite a few people that are signed up for it. We have also started our text alert system which is something that we are using. We're working very closely with MassDOT. The resident engineer here has been very helpful in letting us know what's happening as far as the construction or possible delays in traffic as some have seen over the last couple of days. The text alert system to sign up for it, anybody can do that. All you need to do is send the word manhand to 96362 and you'll be automatically signed up to receive the text alert system text alerts as we get them and that's all I just wanted to kind of update you guys on that and wish everyone a happy holiday thank you and is there anyone else who would like to address the council howdy uh, my name's Clay Crow 13 Holy Oak Street um, I just have a short statement to read here regarding a subject that you may be talking about in the future. Um, I've served on various volunteer committees for the City of East Hampton 
And I'm here to say that the issue of video regarding working committees in City Hall is less about fairness and transparency and more about playing small town politics. I have served on, ad hoc, on an ad hoc committee to address a restrictive sign ordinance. I've served on an ad hoc highway business committee with the purpose of improving the viability of our last remaining developable business district. And I've served on the local works committee whose purpose is to strengthen local businesses and encourage local buying habits. During those years of service, I've been investigated twice by the Mass Ethics Commission as a result of written complaints from someone in East Hampton. The complaint was about a conflict of interest, simply because I own a business here in East Hampton. I ask you, what's wrong with a local business person trying to improve local business businesses, and who better to give an experienced opinion? And by the way, both times the Ethics Commission found no conflict and considered the investigation a waste of time. The issue is about a lot more than transparency. We need fair and knowledgeable people on the boards and committees of East Hampton. And I absolutely agree that the presence of unmanned video cameras destroys the creativity of volunteers when they think that any carefully scrutinized comment they might make would result in public ridicule and government investigations. This will certainly result in a lack of volunteers at a time when we desperately need them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public who would like to address the council, feel free to come to the podium. Your name address. Okay. I'd okay. just like to remark to Clay. Clay, that was an excellent choice of words, and I thank you for your sentiments and because I agree with you wholeheartedly. Thank you. Moving on. Um, communications from elected officials, boards, and committees. Councilor Derby. I have two announcements tonight. I just wanted to let everybody know that we did receive um, our memo from PERAC, the Public Employee Retirement Administration Commission, um, that states our required fiscal year 2014 appropriation. Um, so if anybody would like to see that, that is available um, in the city clerk's office for interested parties. Uh, and also have announcement for the 2013 East Hampton calendar, uh, images from the first East Hampton photo contest and the proceeds are to benefit the Pesquamic Conservation Trust. They're $15 for each calendar, and you can purchase them here at 50 Payson Ave at the City Clerk's Office or at Eastmont Frame Shop in East Hampton. And that concludes my announcements. Thank you very much, Mayor Communications. None? Well, okay, moving on then. We're already at rest. <laughs> Standing committees, Rules of Government Relations, Councilor Rist. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to announce that uh, we're going to hold a meeting on January 8th, which may be moved to the 15th, depending on Councillor Cobb's availability, to deal with the Mount Tom coal plant resolution and the uh, possible rule change regarding videotaping. With that, I'd like to, with your permission, Mr. President, bring up the videotaping issue under this committee since we have no public hearings. Sure. Uh, just to review for the Council, <coughs> I was asked by former CPA Chairman Bob Harrison to look into the open meeting law with regard to recording of video, video recording of meetings by unmanned cameras as they exist in our building. Uh, as I gave you at the, the meeting I last attended, the city attorney opinion, uh, which included a seek not board of health opinion, it is um, obvious that open meeting law does not require the use of public equipment to record uh, any meeting. We are required to allow any individual to record with their own equipment, which has been done uh, effectively and there has been no problem with that. Uh, that said, the City Council has no authority to mandate recording by committees and boards. We only have authority over our own, our own meetings and our own subcommittees. If we wanted to require all boards and committees to videotape, we would need a new ordinance or an administrative code change that would have to be approved by a majority of the council and by the mayor. 
My position has been written about, and I want to make it clear what that is. I'm in favor of elected officials who obviously know that they're in the public, and for the purpose of transparency and access, elected officials ought not to have a problem being recorded at our meetings, whether they're this meeting or subcommittee meetings. I do have a problem right now mandating it through ordinance, volunteer committees uh, being required <coughs> to videotape their recordings. I believe it would be nice if they would agree to it eventually. I believe especially our very important committees like the Planning Board, the Zoning Board, the CPA Committee, which deals with tax dollars, ought to not be afraid to allow the public to see their workings. However. I believe there is a lot of validity to what we heard this evening and to Mr. Harrison's concern that volunteers who are not used to this will not want to serve. And I believe we ought to give them time because this is new technology. In fact, we all didn't know about it. It suddenly appeared. So I think we ought to give them time. This is just my opinion. So at this point, I would not be in favor of an ordinance if this council or the mayor should put one forward to mandate that for all boards and committees. Um, it, and to be clear, as uh, the person stated this evening, I believe it's been a very hard for us to get people to serve on our volunteer committees and to add this layer of public uh, viewing without, they need to be used to it. And I believe that future appointees ought to be told that this is coming. But for now, I think we ought to wait on that. The rule I've presented this evening is because I believe, and I hope most of us agree, that as elected officials we ought to turn on the cameras. But it's also a very good rule that sets the record straight that elected officials ought to do it. And the point, the point being that um, we set an example. Um, and also for the future councils, counselors that may come on next year or the future, they'll have a rule in place that mandates the use of these cameras. I believe city government ought to be as transparent as possible, and I think we ought to do that. That said, I would like to send this rule to committee, but I'd like to open it up, Mr. President, if you would allow for discussion. Yeah, I mean, obviously we can have some brief discussion on it, but if it's going to committee, we'll be having it again, obviously. But if someone wants to make some brief statements before we before we send it to committee on Council Sikowski? Well, I've been for, uh, fortunate or unfortunate enough to catch a few of those televised things on our local channel. Number one, you can't hear what they're saying. The sound is terrible. The whole thing should be reviewed. You can't even hear a word. There's, back, there's a background noise all the way through the whole program. You catch a word here or there, you don't know what's going on. So that, and the other thing of it is, when, you, when you're in one of these committee meetings, you have to go for more information and it's a chat back and forth a lot of the times. Not a motion to be recognized, not a motion to be here. And some people will take that out of context. And I'd hate to see anybody get picked on or somebody starts because they don't know the whole story. I think right now, let the whole issue just go away and don't even worry about it. That's the way I feel. Any additional comments? Governor Hagan. Um, I'd just like to state, uh, you know, I'm a very strong advocate of the open meeting system and transparency, and uh, certainly I would have no problem supporting uh, this rule, and I'm glad it's going to committee. Um, I just wonder, and I'm not sure uh, uh, government relations, I, I think. The council is really should take the whole issue up though because I think um, and maybe it was partly um, the way it was implemented where you know as, as Councilor Riss stated all of a sudden the cameras just appeared and maybe people you know didn't uh, maybe it was sprung on them and I, I just think that uh, as a council we should uh, really really talk about the whole issue uh, of uh, and again I'm not saying we should immediately move to create an ordinance and I think there needs to be time but I think it is a val valuable service I I've used them at times when I've had conflicts in one meeting and because we meet a lot of times and I've gone to other committee meetings that are that are meeting at the same time and I think it's been valuable I think it's valuable to seniors and certainly in the major committees like uh, uh, someone said uh, uh, should definitely be um, there we have the technology 
Um, I do think that we need a little better um, uh, method of utilizing the equipment. I know as, as chairing one subcommittee, uh, you can't really tell when, I mean, you've got to kind of get up to make sure the camera's running and, and go back up, make sure it's off, and, and there's no signage, and I think uh, maybe this can come out of the committee, too, of, of better signage. And I'd just like to see it go to committee and maybe have a, a, a little more inclusive discussion of the whole, of the whole, whole item so that we can do what's best for the city. And, again, I don't know if that would all have to be, could be done in rules. Um, Mr. President. I, I think... Yeah, it might be a start, and then whether or not that involves ordinance, but it would be a start. Sure. Councilor Hake, uh, risk. Uh, if the council wishes, although I'm opposed to an ordinance or code change at this time, we certainly can take it up in rules committee um, to see if the rules committee, if, if the council wishes the rules committee to make an opinion regarding beyond the rule administrative code change forcing others. If, if, if that's the council's wish, that would be an additional item on our agenda beyond the rule, because I think there's two separate issues here. Mm -hmm. So I certainly would entertain that if, if a council wants to move that as a second motion to send that particular item to our committee as well. Um, it's certainly worth discussion. I certainly agree with that. Councilor Derby. You know, I, I think uh, at first look, I, I have no problem with this, and I, and I agree that as elected officials, we should be as tra transparent as possible. You know, I, I think that a couple of questions I would say within your committee that I would like to know the answer to would be, what are these? What are the videos going to be used for? Um, are they going to be broadcast on ECAT, or is it going to be someone has an issue and they want to go back and review? Um, is it going to be used to try to get a gotcha moment? Uh, that would be a concern of mine, maybe. Um, and then would it necessarily have an impact on citizen involvement if they thought that they were going to go to a meeting and then be broadcast um, in whatever venue? Um, I just don't want to discourage people coming to meetings uh, because I feel like we already have a hard enough time getting citizens to come to meetings and I wouldn't want another barrier to that uh, because they oh, I can watch it on TV or I don't want to be on TV. Uh, so that's one question. And then, you know, what would happen if, uh, if a chair forgot to record is there going to be consequences you know are we going to have yeah, I, I just want to make sure that we think this really through because people make mistakes sometimes and you know I, I would hate to have someone be censured for forgetting to push the record button or something like that so uh, you know unless it was intentional and that's another story but those are a few things that I imagine will come up just okay that's good. my initial all good, thought all good ideas yeah. okay. just one other ideas. quick comment and, and you know I think uh, once it gets into committee, I think it would be important to um, to get the mayor's uh, point of view. I, I mean, I think he's given us a, a memo where he encourages its use, but doesn't mandate its use. But um, you know, let's be honest: most of the volunteers are appointed by the mayor, and I think I'd like to know what the mayor's feeling is of of, of you know how volunteers would react or not react, or the ability to get volunteers. So I think it should be a whole, not a contentious discussion. I don't think we want to go down that. I just think to try to, to look at the whole problem and see if we can't come up with something that's uh, in the best interest of everyone in the city. And the, e the easiest way to, s to settle this is, is the people that shut off their TV sets to come to the meetings. That's all there is to it. They don't even need it. We could save on electricity, save the environment. We don't have to worry about being a green community. I mean, that's not the reason why. It's mm -hmm. like I couldn't make two meetings, and I listened. To two of them were very important, and the sound and picture was perfect. So uh, I yeah. have different experience than sure. you did. But I think, again, if we're just for a preliminary discussion, this is probably enough. Um, mm -hmm. Then I'll make a motion. That, uh, I'll make discussion. a motion that has two parts then. The first okay. part would be a move to move the uh, proposed rule 11g video recording to committee and the second part of the motion is to also ask the rules committee to discuss video recording in general for all boards and committees second okay we have motion a second to move those two items to uh, rules and government relations for further discussion is there any additional discussion although we've kind of had it okay all those in favor aye, aye. aye. no uh, one no okay and no abstentions motion still passes does that conclude? Councilor? Yeah, that concludes. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> finance, Councilor Hagen. Uh, finance, um, let me announce the next meeting. Our next meeting will be January 9th, 2013 at 6 p.m. in Room 1. Um, at that time, we'll take up uh, uh, some new issues that I'll address at new business. Uh, we did start uh, the budget this season, as I mentioned, at the last full council meeting is is uh, we have some dates now and that will start uh, coming up <coughs> but uh, 
I would like to take care of, we have one more item that's sitting on the uh, agenda here, which is Councillor Cobb's request for a senior exemption. Uh, this was brought before our committee um, uh, under the possibility that the Proposition 2 and a half passed, and I, the committee uh, took it up and voted at the last meeting uh, that we'd like to uh, ask that the council remove it without prejudice this time, and then as we see what uh, the budget looks like, um, and if there's a need maybe later in the year, we can bring it back up. So uh, we did vote 3-0 to uh, request that the council uh, remove this item without prejudice from the agenda at this time. Second. Yes, that's an informal motion. Second. So with motion a second for move of that from the agenda without prejudice. Any additional discussion on that item? Okay, none seen. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Does that conclude? Uh, that concludes until uh, new business. Okay, thank you. Why don't you move that now? You want me to move? <laughs> okay. I have two uh, items uh, I'd like to uh, uh, I'll make a motion of after of uh, moving to finance. Uh, the first one I'm going to do a little out of order um, it will be B. I want to do a first reading on a supplemental appropriation uh, dated December 12, uh, 2012. The request is hereby made to approve the following appropriation. The amount requested $14,603.52 to be appropriated from sewer and wastewater treatment reserve fund in the amount of $829.09, water department reserve fund in the amount of $829.09, and the general reserve fund in the amount of $12,945.34 to be appropriated to the various departments listed on the attached spreadsheet, which is available in the clerk's office. Um, it's both sides, I believe there's uh, several, uh, there are most of the uh, departments, obviously I can go through a mayor, a auditor, assessor, treasurer, computers, tax collector, personnel, city clerk, city planner, billing operations, police, dispatch, uh, fire part-time, building inspector, animal control, DPW administration, DPW engineering, Brookside Cemetery, Board of Health, Council on Aging, Recreation Department, and Parks Department. Uh, also, uh, excuse me, those are the only departments. Um, uh, that said, I'd like uh, to make the following motion that we move this appropriation or the uh, request for this appropriation to finance at this time. Second. So, a okay, motion a second to move the supplementary appropriation of 14,603 to fund a 1.5% COLA for pay plan employees to finance. Any additional discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. The second item is uh, related to the first, and that would be uh, uh, I'd make it a form motion that the following be sent to uh, finance. And that is uh, the, the following ordinance, that the city amend the ordinance known as classification and pay plan by substituting exhibit B wages and wage scale on file in the clerk's office dated January 1, 2012 with the attached exhibit B salary and wage scale dated December 31st, 2012 to establish the effective dates of said substitution. This would be the need uh, for changes in the pay plan if in fact the COLA is approved. Second. We have a motion a second to move the classification pay plan exhibit B to finance. Any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank that you. concludes uh, new business okay. as far as finance is concerned. Thank you. Public safety, there was no business appointments. Councilor Winner. Thank you. Uh, we met tonight at um, 545. We have uh, two mayoral appointments in front of us to vote on tonight. Um, the first uh, appointment um, is for the Board of Assessors, Peter Davies, and the second is Theodore Perch for the ECA Plus Committee. Uh, we voted two to zero that um, the appointments be brought forth to full City Council uh, approval. Okay, so I have a form of motion to accept those appointments? Uh, in the form of motion that we uh, accept um, Peter Davies, Board of Assessors, with his term of expiration of December 31st, 2015, and Theodore Perch for the ECA Plus Committee, expiration date of 12-31-2015. Second. Okay, motion a second to accept the mail appointments of Peter Davies, the Board of Assessor, and Theodore Perch to ECA Plus. Any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you, and that clears my committees. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on, ordinance, Councilor Derby. Thank you, Mr. President. We met on 12 12 12, <laughs> um, and we did discuss uh, the items on our agenda. Um, 
And I guess I'll also now set our next meeting, which is going to be January 9th at 6 p.m. in conference room A, 50 Face and Ave. Um, and at our last meeting, uh, we uh, did uh, request the planners to be there. Unfortunately, she was ill, but we did make some good progress, came up with many questions, um, and so we're hoping at that January 9th meeting to get some of the answers to those questions. Um, we did make some movement on the keeping of chickens in the industrial zone, and so you will see before you um, uh, a, an amended uh, table of uses um, and an amended section 10.8 that we would like to review. Um, so I would, if, any, if nobody object, objects to me using my new business time here, um, I would like to move that the, this be sent to the ordinance subcommittee and the planning board for further review. Second. Okay, motion a second to move the uh, exist table from 5-1 um, to both ordinance and planning board. Any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying. Motion passes. That concludes my report. Okay, thank you very much. Property Council Sikowski. No report. Okay, well, we have no old business or pending business. We did our new business, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. President, no, that's a risk. I'd like to wish all of my colleagues on the council, <coughs> all of the people that work for the city, the mayor, and all of the citizens of East Hampton a happy holiday and a happy new year. Yes. Thank you very much. Sentiment shared by everyone. Thank you. I think we should say Merry Christmas to all. Okay. okay. <laughs> Merry <laughs> Christmas and Happy <laughs> Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting for a motion to adjourn, though, folks. So no, where are you? <laughs> where are you? <laughs> Your motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.